There are different things in this world that divide people into two camps. The red pill or the blue one. The dark side of the force or the light side of the force. PC or Mac. Today, we're talking about this pair. Ferrari, Lamborghini. Once you make your choice, it's for life. For decades, Ferrari and Lamborghini have been presented as rivals. But here's the thing. In reality, they have never even been competitors. So here it is, the real story behind the two legendary car brands. Ferrari came first. Let me take you to Modena, a rather small city in northern Italy. There, in the 1920s, a race car driver called Enzo Ferrari drives an Alfa Romeo and wins several racing awards. Not only does he like to race, but he's also interested in everything behind the scenes, like the management and development of Alfa Romeo cars. But there's a dark cloud over his profession. Two outstanding race car drivers, Ugo Civacci and Antonio Ascari, suddenly pass away. This deeply affects young Ferrari. It makes him clearly see the true cost of being engaged in such a dangerous sport. After the birth of his son, Alfredo, Enzo Ferrari officially retires from the racing sport. Well, by that time, he's participated in 41 Grand Prix and won 11. But not being a racer anymore doesn't mean that Ferrari quits racing completely. After all, it is his true passion. After retiring, Enzo Ferrari built his own race team called Scuderia Ferrari. No wonder that with such an outstanding mentor, the team becomes incredibly successful and they appear with a team emblem on their Alfa Romeo cars, a prancing horse. In 1933, Alfa Romeo stopped supporting Scuderia drivers because of financial reasons. In 1937, the team is dissolved. Ferrari works for Alfa Romeo for several more years, but leaves after a disagreement with the manager. He founds a company that supplies parts to racing teams and manufactures his first two cars. Finally, in 1947, he founds a company called Ferrari and starts producing cars bearing his name and adorned with that prancing horse emblem. Of course, being obsessed with races, he puts the focus on speed and performance, neglecting the comfort of the driver. As long as they drive fast and win races, the rest doesn't matter much to the founder. Ferrari starts a new successful team racing his cars, which quite soon makes the brand incredibly popular. The thing is that Ferrari doesn't only produce racing cars. To expand the company and attract more customers, they manufacture cars for city drivers too. Just like race cars, they're fast, but also uncomfortable, noisy, and rough to drive, especially for a long time. And this is where Ferruccio Lamborghini comes into play. Born in a simple family of farmers, he's been growing up in rural Italy. Unlike Mr. Ferrari, this young man has no interest in races, but Lamborghini is obsessed with farming machinery. So later, he studies mechanics, founds a company called Lamborghini Trattori, and starts to manufacture tractors. Yes, the first Lamborghinis are tractors. The business is going well, and quite soon, our second protagonist becomes a wealthy man buying fancy cars. He has many models, but our story is about a particular brand. So, in 1958, he buys an expensive Ferrari 250 GT. And the car disappoints him. Don't get me wrong, he admits that it's a good car, but it's too rough for a road car and way too noisy. In addition, there are constant problems with the clutch. So Mr. Lamborghini takes frequent trips to technicians, but the problem doesn't go away. Finally, he finds out that some of the spare parts used to assemble an extremely expensive Ferrari are the same parts used to assemble Lamborghini tractors. Completely annoyed with this, Lamborghini starts seeking an opportunity to speak to Mr. Ferrari himself, and he finds it. During the meeting, he tells Enzo Ferrari everything that's wrong with his cars, but Mr. Ferrari doesn't care and doesn't take criticism. He's very confident and satisfied with his models. His cars are the fastest in the world, and that's what matters. So he tells Lamborghini to design his own car if he's so smart, but better stick to building his tractors and get lost. Lamborghini has no intention of getting lost. Instead, he modifies his Ferrari so that it outperforms the original models. 
the guy starts producing his own cars. But as a customer who's not satisfied with the models on the market, he places the focus on comfort and reliability. He takes the flaws of all the cars he has owned into account when designing a new one. No problems with the clutch, more space, not noisy, not too hot, and so on. Ferruccio Lamborghini isn't into races. He's a wealthy man, and he wants the most out of a car for the money he pays. He wants a flawless Gran Turismo car, and he starts manufacturing them for like-minded people. Less than a year after the talk with Enzo Ferrari and opening the factory, he presents the first car, the 350 GTV. The biggest point of criticism is the design, which the public doesn't take well. So, Lamborghini redoes it completely, and that's how the 350 GT Lamborghini model is born. We all know the logo of the brand, a raging bull on a black background. But why a bull? Well, there's two reasons. First, Ferruccio Lamborghini's zodiac sign is Taurus. Second, he's fond of bulls, finding them powerful and elegant. Some car models are even called after some bulls. For example, Lamborghini Diablo gets named after a bull called Diablo that was famous in the 19th century. Lamborghini Murcielago is named after another extraordinary bull as well. And after all, a bull is strong and can be a good symbol for a powerful car, don't you think? From the very beginning, a Lamborghini is a luxury car competing with the already famous Ferraris, Jaguars, and Maseratis. At first, people aren't very eager to pay a big sum of money to buy a car from a person who used to produce tractors. But Ferruccio Lamborghini isn't afraid to promote and show off his creation. Some journalists get impressed with the car and shower it with compliments, and that's how the vehicle makes it into the world and into people's hearts. So, bottom line, originally, Ferraris are extra powerful and extra fast. But outside the racing track, they're quite inconvenient. Lamborghinis are comfortable, better equipped, better handled cars providing a smooth ride, but they're not as fast as Ferraris. In the 1960s and 70s, they were not yet supposed to be extra fast, as Ferruccio Lamborghini didn't see the point in races. So, you see, those are two completely different cars, manufactured for different people and different purposes. They're not competitors, and they're impossible to compare. Lamborghini didn't even want to make a racing car, but we know what they are today. So, what happened next? At the dawn of the 1980s, La Rose, the French Formula One team, asked a famous designer to produce a new engine. And the designer contacted his friends at Lamborghini with an offer to collaborate. Soon after, a Lamborghini engine, not yet a car, debuted at Formula One. It wasn't a raging success at the beginning, but the engines looked promising and they kept producing them and supplying them to different car brands. In 1991, a rich businessman requested to produce not only an engine, but a whole Lamborghini race car, and the offer was too good to decline. That car didn't perform too well, but it was the beginning. Over the years, both Ferrari and Lamborghini started to improve what they were lacking. Ferrari started to produce more convenient models for the roads and Lamborghini worked its way up to the racing level, improving the engine and the speed. Still, even though these are the top two supercars even today, they are staying loyal to their original philosophies, with Ferrari putting more emphasis on speed and remaining the fastest, and Lamborghini producing road cars, more comfortable and luxurious. So, if we look closely, they're not really competitors, they're way too different. True car fans will tell them apart from a mile away because they both have their own style. Ferraris have a smooth design, and Lamborghinis are edgier and are designed to be more aerodynamic. What side are you on? That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.